From Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa, this is Anchored in Faith. I want to talk about the, uh, the body is a temple of God. Now, I know it's sometimes we throw it out there. The body is like filthy rags. That is not pertaining to true believers. That is pertaining to sinners, backsliders. People that defile their body with all kinds of things. Let's get into scripture here. Go to 1 Corinthians in the third chapter. Starting around verse 16. The body is not filthy because of his own self. It's what people do with their body or what they put in their body. They meet, so many people these days and back in that time misuse their body. They just, they use their body for sexual pleasure. They use their body for drugs addiction. They use their body for substance abuse. Same thing going on today. But let's get back over in 1 Corinthians. Know ye not, according to verse 16, that ye are the temple of God that has that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, that is a distinction when the Spirit of God is in you. Your body has been crucified with Christ. Because when Jesus Christ went to the cross, he nailed all of the sins to the cross. He nailed all the filth to the cross. He, he nailed all habits of drugs and things. He nailed all that to the cross on his body. So people have no excuse these days. When they receive Jesus, your body needs to be used of God. Our body was made to praise God. How many know your body will praise God because how you use your body for his glory? Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of Jesus dwells in you. Now, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, and that what we represent as true believers. We represent it, the true body of Jesus Christ. Our bodies must be used the right way. Moving on down. Here are some examples of a body being destroyed. Number one, sexual sins. Number two, alcoholic drinks. Number three, tobacco. Number four, narcotics. These destroy the body. This temple was made to glorify God because when people are not born again, we was not born again one time. We did everything. How many of you know we did? We put everything in our body. We didn't care. In other words, we beat our body up bad. People understand that when we were unsaved, we committed fornication. What is fornication? Having sex sins without marriage. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. That's too bad. When you commit fornication, you sin against your whole entire your body, soul, and spirit. Your temple shouldn't be corrupt with ungodliness, but it spoils and it ruins and it's waste. How many of you know the body? was not made for immoral acts. What is immoral acts? Doing things like piercing your body. And you put, um, they have like, um, put marks on their body, I can't think of it, right? the tattoos. They have tattoos on their body so much now in these days. I just don't understand it. But our body, according to reference, let's move on down. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, and we'll get into the message pretty deep here. 6, 13. 1 Corinthians 6, 13. Meats for the belly, and belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Now we know at one time we could eat certain things when we were younger. 
But we know, we found out some stuff. But when you get older, your body just can't digest it. Your, your, your body, you know, it, it started to build up acid and stuff like stuff. So it gets in there and, and you have to just move around, exercise, or walking up and down the streets, walking in parks, just to help your food digest because your body just can't take it no more. <laughs> we had to be careful with what meats we do eat because eating these meats that have, have too much uh, fatness in it called high blood pressure, caused arteries to be clogged. And I'm sure people have heard that before. This caused destruction of the body because the body was made to glorify God. When we put the wrong things in our body, it does, does not glorify the Lord. The body is not to be drawn up to a harlot because when you join to a harlot, you become one. The body was made for God to be used by God, not to be used by Lucifer. Verse 14, and God have both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of and harlot? God forbids. God do not go for that. Verse 16, what? Know ye not that ye, that he that is joined to a harlot is one body? So when you join to some ungodliness, there's a spirit behind this when ungodliness is involved here. Because anything that's ungodly, it comes from the kingdom of darkness. Because when you join up with a harlot, you become one. But this goes for the, we're going to flip it over. When you join up in, in holy marriage to somebody, it's not nothing wrong with it. I don't care if you're a sinner. If you're married, that's good. Born again, it's even better. People got to pray for their mate. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, it's always been like that. You have to pray. You end up getting somebody that you will regret the rest of your life. You end up getting with someone that causes you more headaches, more heartaches, loss of sleep, loss of hair, blood pressure problem, stressed out, don't know which way to turn. So we got to be careful then pray about who we pick to hook up with our body. Because that's powerful when two become one in a marriage. When two become one, our bodies was made to glorify God, not to be joined up to a holler, not to do the ungodly thing. But when you take a stand for Jesus Christ, people, when you take a stand for Christ with your body and you know that Jesus gave your body to glorify him, then you stand on that. Don't let nobody tell you that your body was not made to glorify God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm feeling the spirit here. Amen. God made your body to glorify him. Now, Jesus went to the cross and his body got beat up, whipped beyond recognition just for we as people of God, to have our body presented to Jesus Christ, back to him. And our body represents the church because we are the church. We are the true living church of Jesus Christ because Christ lives in you, the hope of glory. That's hope in Jesus, not in you. Self-righteousness have caused people a lot of problems. That person don't understand when you carry a body and do it the wrong way, holding grudges in your in yourself will cause you more health problems. Grudge holding shouldn't be in the temple of God. But I want to be joined continually up to Christ. I mean, you know, you want. But the scripture says over in the 17th verse, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, praise God. And that's what our body is. We'll join up to Jesus Christ because we are what? Spiritual beings. 
Verse 18, we must understand something today that we have to flee fornication. Here is sin that a man does is without the body. The body was not made for this, folks, to be immoral. The body was not made, and this is a reference I like to read a little bit of, foulness in a religious sense. Your body becomes to be defiled, polluted, unclean in a moral sense. And also abominations when people use their body the wrong way. When they join up to a Solomite's spirit, their body become to be abomination, which should become filthy rags. It's all about what you put in your body. It's all about how you allow your body to be used. It's all about who's using your body. Who are you allowing to use your body? Is it God? Almighty, or is it Satan? Because if you let Satan use your body, he will use you up and make a fool out of you, and you will be as filthy rags in the sight of God. But if you allow God Almighty to use your body, then you are in right standing. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the scripture said, I'm crucified with Christ. I have, I have connection with Jesus Christ's crucifixion. When I have turned my life over to Christ, when I have dedicated my life to Christ, now my life is single one-to-one -one with God, and God uses my body for his glory, honor, and praise. Now, that's what I want to do. How I many of you want to be the same way today? You want your body join up. Woo! Because, let me ask you a question. Simple question. God do not dwell in an unclean temple. So it cannot relate to the true Christians as having filthy body. It cannot relate to true Christians. The Holy Ghost don't, don't dwell in uncleanness. So it cannot relate to true Christians that having a, a filthy body. Holy Ghost don't, God don't dwell with, still deal with sin. God don't, yeah, we live under grace, but God still don't deal with this sin. See, because it's a difference between, and I heard a minister say, the dispensation of the law, where no one would make it, would be able to make it. I just believe that. But under grace, you got a chance every time. Because as long as you're living, and people are taking for granted the grace period. You know, when you, the natural example, when you pay bills sometimes, and I, some people I do. I use a grace period. You got a grace period of at least sometime 10 days to pay your bill. But if you go beyond 10 days, then you're going to face a penalty. That's goal for today, with, even with true Christians. If you allow your body to be misused, and you go over a grace period, you will reap what you sow, according to the scripture. That up uh, is of the flesh, reap corruption. Because when corruption comes in, you reap. They always say in the old school church, what goes around comes around. But your body, according to verse nine, 19, let's read it. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? The Holy Spirit is precious, folks, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. You don't own your own body. God, that body you have belongs to God. People are going around running their mouth, this is my body. And I can do what I please. But they'll find out something. You, 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 you mess your body up. You won't live too long. I'm going to tell you, a lot of people have cut their life off. By putting 
anything in their body. And you wonder why cancer comes in some people's body. How they misuse their body. Let me say it like this. How they allow Satan to talk to their mind. To put stupid thoughts in your mind. To defile your body. They say, ain't nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and do it. Oh, a little shot of cocaine ain't going to hurt you. Go ahead and do it. Hey, child, go do it because it's good. I mean, it'll, it'll make you feel good, you know. Go ahead and do, 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 the, do the, uh, the reef. Go ahead and do it. Take a puff. It'll make you feel good. It'll make you lose track on the way life is running. It'll give you a shortcut in life. Go ahead and do it. But we are in a time now. We get ready to approach another level. Spirit of suicide. It start to manifest. And this is something you don't see with your eyes now. But it's only by the spirit of God that it will be revealed. How many of you, know, how many of you think you bought your own body? No. I remember back in the time when I was growing up. I think I believe I did confess Christ 12 years old. That's a tradition. But I used to say my body was to be used by God. That was put in me by God. That was put in me by God. I used to go like you know, working on construction and whatever. And this here probably won't be good to say. <laughs> there was always somebody that Satan wanted to use out there to try to lure you as a young virgin that have never been messed with. To try to defile your temple. See, because God dealt with me early and said, your body means something. You've seen it where people have messed their body up. You've seen people that messed up their body. You've seen where they look older than Methuselah. You see where people just same age you are, but their hair is just gray as a gray fox. I'm just saying, you've seen people your age got more wrinkles than a prune. I've seen people that abuse their body with alcohol, which cut them off early. And I can't understand right now, and I can somewhat understand, and they use the term to save my life. I tell you. Out in the pop world and out in the singing, rock and roll, all them big time singing groups that used to come, that was on the scene in the 70s, 60s. How somehow the enemy will whisper to them because they never had nothing from the beginning. All of a sudden they had fame. And the enemy, when you get fame, you got to be careful. He start whispering to you, why don't you try this? Because you got money now. When you didn't have no money, you couldn't buy this. You couldn't buy no drugs. Nobody wanted you. You couldn't even buy a prostitute. That thing there, because it looked good to the eyesight, because I had the money. I could purchase that thing now because at one time I couldn't purchase that beautiful looking woman that was really corrupt inside. But on the outside, she looked beautiful. It looked good and Satan always throw things that look good. That's what got Lucifer in trouble. He thought he was looking good looking. He was good looking and pride got him kicked out. Now, and they end up buying 
drugs when they come to be popular in the world. And many of them, a whole high percentage of people end up dying early. They had it going. People, they had the ability. God gave them the ability to sing beautiful. I couldn't even match the singing ability that they had. I mean, they had it. And they allowed the enemy to whisper to them a thought. Oh, it takes one thought to blow your world asunder. And they went and messed up. I remember a basketball player that was headed toward the NBA, heading towards, in 1986. He was known all over the country as being one of the best number one basketball players coming out of college. And he got into drugs one time, and it was over. Killed him. What, it, what is is worth to destroy your temple. According to verse 20, we are bought with a price through the blood of Jesus. We as true believers, we must recognize that every day when we see the enemy try to mess with our body in the elements, in the weather zone that goes up and down, we must understand something we need to, by the grace of God, allow God to help us to protect ourselves from the weather because we got to stay hidden in prayer. That's one of the keys. Pray without ceasing that God can help you through the storms in life. When things come like storms come in your life, you can be able to overcome the storm and your body will be able to survive viruses that's out in the atmosphere, in the air. You can call that pollution too. It's out there. It pollutes. And then if your immune system is low, it, you will just pick it right up, see? And that's why God gave us an immune system to pick up when things try to occur. Yes. And then, especially true believe we got the Holy Spirit. They call it sixth sense. It will let you know something is getting ready to happen here. There are some things you better be aware of that's getting ready to take place. And the weather is getting ready to change. Holy Spirit will speak to you. The weather is getting ready to change. And you better prepare with clothing to protect his body. Because God cannot use a body that's sick. God cannot use a body that's full of disease and you can't hardly get around. Ah, well, I can kind of argue with that a little bit. He can use you if you just yield to him. A lot of times, if we yield to God in our ailments, God can get the glory out of our life. A lot of times. Sometimes we get ailments, we just shut down. We got to understand, we got the word of God in us. We got the power of Jesus in us. We can speak against elements in our body. We can lay hands on our own self and declare healing. The scripture says you can lay hands on it. You can lay hands, not necessarily all the time on somebody, but lay hands on yourself when you're going through something. Your body was made to glorify God, and it was bought and purchased through the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And in your spirit, we have to protect our spirit, the spirit that's in us, by taking care of our body, but not putting anything in it. Because we will have to get a report. Yes, this body, one day, will melt when we pass from life to eternity. But while you're here now, do what's necessary to protect your temple. Do what's necessary to take care of your body. Do what you need to do. Don't listen to everybody telling you what to do and what not to do. Because <laughs> some people will tell you something that will destroy your temple. They'll tell you some wrong information that will kill you. 
They'll kill you with the wrong medicine. Hear me, somebody. And it will cause problems in your body. And because this body is a temple of God, it will cause hair loss sometimes. It will cause loss of sleep. It will cause blood pressure problems. When they give you the wrong stuff in your body and say this is what you're supposed to take. But you better pray to God Almighty and say, God, this body belongs to you. I don't want to put anything in there. I'm going to be praying now more. Put more vitamin C and, and all that kind of stuff in that temple to keep that temple running. How I many of you know, uh, just like a car, a car got a body, but the engine is uh, inside of the body. It got to be taken care of. Changing spot plugs and changing oil and making sure it's running smooth and to, to so that body and just run on down the road. Can I hear you? Amen. Oh, we got to do what we're supposed to do. We don't to use our body for immoral stuff. We got to put the right stuff in there. So this body means a lot to God. You, you, your body is precious. So you got to be careful how you speak out of your mouth for your body and you declare your healing regardless of how you feel because this body was made to be a vehicle in the earth to get around. I don't want to be joined up to something that's going to destroy my temple because only God knows how long we're going to live. But I'm telling you, I'm not planning on abusing this temple. Sometimes we do. We sleep late. We go to bed late. I ain't, it's more than you. It's more than me. It's more than us. There's a lot of people go to sleep late and we say we're real busy. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith. P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322, or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.